So the internal carotid artery is, is, forms a, a large part of the circular willis. And we'll see another picture of that again. And then the, anterior or the internal carotid is going to form the anterior and the middle cerebral arteries. So we had the uh, basilar artery gives rise to the posterior cerebral arteries. Then the internal carotid is going to be the uh, middle and the anterior cerebral arteries. And then also it's going to have a communicating artery which connects with the posterior cerebral artery. So that's where you're going to start getting that circle coming together. And so the internal carotid artery is going to supply the rest of the part of the brain that's not supplied by the basilar artery or the vertebral basilar artery. So just remember the basilar is more towards the back part of the head and brain. And then the internal carotid is going to do more of the front part. So now we'll take another look at this circle. So what's this one going to here going to be? Basilar artery. artery, and then that's going to become merged with and become the posterior cerebral artery. Okay. Then here's the internal carotid artery, so that's coming up from below, and then. That's going to give rise to the middle cerebral and the anterior cerebral artery. Okay, and then you have these anastomosis arteries. That that's what makes the circle. So we're looking up from the bottom. Uh, kind of yeah, but you know these the this circle here is is in the transverse plane, whereas the uh, basal artery and pubic arteries in the internal brain is coming up in this direction. So they come up and they circle around. I mean, this is kind of putting the three-dimensional thing into a two-dimensional picture. So this circle was here. It was around the base above the pond. No good to the pond right here. So it's going to circle around right in this area here, which is going to be inside the cradle, right? So it's above the front of the magnet. So what does this stand for again? Vertebral basilar artery. And then this is what? Internal carotid. And so which one is this here? Basal. And then this one? So these two would be the posterior cerebral arteries. And then this is coming up from below. What's this one? Internal carotid, right? So then that comes, gives rise to the middle cerebral and then the anterior cerebral. And then those are connected by the anastomosian arteries. And yeah, so the vertebral basilar artery system does more of the back side of the brain. The internal carotid is going to do more of the middle and the front. Okay. So then coming out of those that circle, so you have the incoming arteries, which is the vertebral basilar artery and the internal carotid. Then the exiting ones would be the anterior cerebral artery. That's going to go to the supplies the brain that controls the lower part of the body. Then the middle cerebral artery is going to supply the brain that's going to control more of the upper part of the body. And the posterior cerebral artery is going to be, like, again, more of the back part, so the occiput. And okay, so there you go. We'll fill in the blank things. I'm sorry, what is the one that controls the upper portion of the body? The uh, posterior. Middle cerebral. Oh. Okay. So the exiting artery, again, is the anterior cerebral artery. It's going to go to the front part of the brain, but also it's going to go to the part that controls the lower part of the body. And then middle cerebral is going to go towards the middle portion of the brain which is going to control the upper part of the body. And then that leaves the posterior cerebral artery. It's going to go more towards the uh, thalamus and the temporal lobe, also the occiput. Can you repeat that last part? Uh, yeah. The posterior cerebral artery is going to go to the occipital lobe. Again, it's more of the back. And then it comes around and does some of the uh, temporal and parietal. Or not to, or temporal and the thalamus. 
the thalamus is more in the center of the brain. Right, that's this part right here. And then you have the communicating arteries. So here's the anterior, anterior cerebral artery here, and then that communicates right there. Right, so here's one communicating artery right there between the anterior cerebral arteries. And then you have the posterior communicating artery right here. So that's what connects the vertebral basal system with the internal carotid. So that's this here, the posterior communicating artery. And most of the time, you can see these are the larger arteries. Most of the blood's going to be going through here and not as much through these communicating arteries. But like I said, they're there for to build in the redundancy so that if one artery gets blocked, there's another way for the blood to get through. And so if you have blockage, because obviously we're talking about the pretty important parts of your brain that you need to survive, so your body's going to have a system to make sure that you're going to get blood supply. Um, you can have, some of these can have a gradual occlusion, or like atherosclerosis, cardiovascular disease, or you can have an acute occlusion, like a stroke. So now we'll talk about the different things that can happen if in the anterior cerebral artery. So what does this mean when we say contralateral? Yeah. Yeah, opposite side. So you have ipsilateral and contralateral. So a lot of times we're going to be talking about ipsilateral and contralateral because, again, you're dealing with things that, that cross. You, typically one side of the brain controls the other side of the body, except for, remember, the cerebellum, it's ipsilateral. So a lot of times, if you're talking about something in the brain, it's going to affect the other side of the body. So you're going to have contralateral, and then what would the hemiplegia be? Yeah. So hemi meaning half and plegia meaning paralysis. Because you also have paraplegia, quadriplegia, and hemiplegia. Because a lot of times you see if you see somebody that's had a stroke, they're one side of their body, they're kind of you know, not almost paralyzed on one side, whereas the other side can move normally. So now if you have bilateral then you know, it's going to affect both sides and you're going to have more ominous symptoms here like urinary incontinence, apathy, confusion, judgment, mutism, and apraxia. Um, one of the things that should be on the secure side, if not, is there's a, a vocabulary list of different, because we're going to be tossing around a lot of different words. so. And you need to need to speak the language. So praxia is the inability to execute purposeful, previously learned motor task, despite the physical ability and willingness to do it. So you can have motor control, but you lose the tap, lose the ability to uh, perform previously learned tasks. So it's like you're about when people have brain injuries or something, they need to learn how to walk again, they learn, <coughs> learn how to talk again. Because they have the physical ability to do it, but the motor control and the pathways that were burned in to do that task aren't working anymore. 